Okay, I'm going to make a start because I know this is, uh, we have got quite a lot of people hopefully joining, but I'm also conscious Faz has, has got some wonderful slides he wants to get through, so I uh, don't want to take too much of his time up. So just um, welcome everyone to today's session. For those that don't know me, I'm Nicola Mann and I work for Brentwood and Rock Rochford District Councils. That they are based in Essex, so it, we are an Essex team, me and Faz today. Um, I'm also a board member of PPMA, so um, I get to come on and, and introduce some of these sessions as, as part of that. So what I will just do is a couple of housekeeping rules um, just so to make the, the session go smoothly. And that is to keep yourself on mute unless you're invited to unmute for questions. And it's a personal preference whether you would like your camera on or off. Um, the session is being recorded, but only the speakers will be seen and the recording will be available to you all via email and also on our website. If you do have any questions during Fazzy's presentation, then pop them in the chat and we'll try and get through them. Obviously, you, you know, Faz has got some great slides to get through, so we, we may be short on time. But if we do run out of time, we'll make sure that we, we kind of get those questions captured and, and get responses back at the end, um, even if we don't do it in the session today. Um, and then really it will be over to Faz. So Faz is the as it says on the screen, the Diversity, Equality and Inclusion Lead at Essex County Council. And he's going to be talking us through how Essex developed their equality, diversity and inclusion strategy and obviously what organisations can do to, to kind of adopt that and, and learning from, from what they've done at Essex, basically. So without further ado, over to Faz and uh, I shall be quiet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicola. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. And hi, as, as Nicola mentioned, I'm Faz Akeem. I'm the Equality, Diversity, Diversity and Inclusion Lead at Essex County Council. And I just want to say thank you to everyone for attending today. Also, thank you to PPMA as well for hosting today's session. So there's a the number of slides I will be going through and I will be probably going through them at pace. But hopefully we'll have a bit of time, as, as Nicola mentioned, at the end to take any questions. But also, you know, do use the chat box to ask any questions and we'll try and cover those at the end as well. So what I'm going to be covering today. So I'll be talking about my approach in terms of developing the EDI strategy for Essex County Council, our first strategy for Essex County Council. And then I'll be talking a bit about the three E's in adopting the inclusive mindset. So this is something around how we embed EDI within the workplace. Also share some of the highlights on our EDI journey and what we've been doing this year and what we've got coming up as well. And then also potentially what's on the horizon when it comes to EDI. So I'll be aware that there'll be a lot of people on the call who will be looking at EDI, whether that is the day job or as part of their role. Um, so I'll be just sort of sharing what I've been seeing in terms of what may be coming up on the horizon. So the next slide, really, I just wanted to just share in terms of what an EDI lead is and what it, uh, um, what it involves. And it's a really sort of, I suppose it's quite a complex role, isn't it? So as an EDI lead, you have to wear many hats. And that's what I found of my years of being working in, in this space. So I'll, I'll go through them. Um, so partly it's been a project manager, a psychologist, a data analyst, uh, a teacher, um, an event coordinator, an influencer, a strategist, a researcher, a communicator, an advisor. So, you know, they are unique roles within the organization. And it's important to understand, you know, what the EDI person, the lead, you know, within your space is bringing into the organization. And when you're developing strategies or plans, it's about being cognizant of all the the skill sets that is needed to help deliver on what you're trying to do. Also to EDI leads who may be on the call, it's also being able to tap into bits of the organisation where that expertise isn't there as well. So I know from my personal experience, I've been a project manager, um, haven't been a teacher, you know, so it's about, you know, understanding, you know, your leadership space and how you sort of be able to sort of, you know, um, communicate effectively on what you're trying to do within the diversity, inclusion, equality space as well. Um, next slide, really, just talking about what does an organisational EDI strategy need to be able to do? So firstly, it has to articulate both the vision and ambition alongside practical steps. So the vision needs to really resonate with everyone in the council um, or in the business, you know, where whatever it may be. Um, practical steps will be for maybe for specific people as well. So it needs to talk to a lot of people within the business. 
um, needs to be authentic and relatable. Um, individuals need to be able to see their voice within the strategy. So during the engagement process, um, the stakeholder management that you'll be doing, it's making sure that are you capturing everyone's voice and synthesizing that so it's articulated within your strategic space as well. Um, delivery needs to be um, well informed um, and feel comfortable about owning some of these actions as well to truly embed EDI and I, um, it cross cuts all bits of the business. So it's making sure that specific, you know, delivery leads um, are you're taking you're taking them with you on the journey, and they understand what is required of them as well. Finally, it should be time specific. Um, what we did in Essex County Council is related to our organisational people plan strategy. Um, that was a, I think it was a four-year strategy. But when I came into post um, a year in, I was making sure that the EDI strategy aligned to our overall vision, the strategic um, people plan. And you may have a corporate plan as well. So it's making sure that there's alignment there with whatever you're trying to do with the EDI space is, is linking into the wider business objectives as well. So in terms of my approach um, in developing uh, the EDI strategy. I, I took a project management approach, but it was kind of a light touch project management. I think it's important to have controls and systems there um, to know what you're doing, how you're doing it, and be able to communicate that to the rest of the organization as well. I say light touch. Um, I, I have done project management um, training in the past. I'm Prince 2 project manager practitioner. Um, but you know, this is a technical project. It's about making sure that you know we, we, you're using some of the systems, but not all of them. Um, developing a roadmap, so design, deliver, embed. I think that's what synthesizes in terms of where the direction you're going to go in terms of the strategy, and be clear on that. You know, the phase of design, how long that's going to take, how long the delivery bit and the embed bit as well. So that's communicated early on, so others know what 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 the direction path to travel that you are taking. Um, use my onboarding. So just to say, you know, I started this it's Cancer Council just over a year ago. Um, and I use my onboarding session really to sort of get the information I needed. And I used a sort of consultancy approach called CEQA, which is Situation, Complexity, Question and Answer, really sort of to understand what the EDI picture means for those particular individuals and use that as my stakeholder analysis when I replay back in terms of what the strategy is trying to do. Feeding onto the stakeholder mapping exercise, again, I think that's really important to do right at the beginning of developing a strategy and revisit that as well, because that often does change as well as you progress for the strategy. Some of your stakeholders, you know, I use a power stroke influence sort of mapping exercise, and that might shift um, uh, along the on, along the, the time frame of the strategy as well. And develop and agree a baseline to work on. So I'll go into the next slide. And this is very much around the EDI maturity curve and understanding, you know, where the organization is and where you want to get to as well. So a bit of a complex diagram, but I'll, I'll briefly go over it. So this is some this is something that I find quite helpful to understand where the organization is and where we want to get to. So in terms of Essex County Council, we're very much in that strategic space. Um, we know the EDI is important for our success. And we're moving into integrated and disruptive space as well. So from an organizational perspective, we'll be looking at um, having that EDI being strategically placed within our sort of wider corporate vision. And in terms of our leadership, they know what, what our objective is and how to communicate that as well. And then when we move into integrated and disruptive space, and I don't think they're mutually exclusive, I think you can move from strategic to both integrated and disruptive. It's a part and parcel of your EDI journey. Some of it will be more disruptive um, in a positive way. Um, but also at the same time, you need to be integrating um, EDI um, actions and, and objectives. So that from an organizational perspective, really sort of looking at policies and practices and reinforcing the DEI strategy. And for leaders, it's around having that strong knowledge, you know, knowing how to communicate around EDI. What does it mean to them? What does it mean for employees as well? Next slide really is just, you know, in terms of the steps of creating that EDI strategy. So my starting point was really sort of putting everything on the table, you know, what is everyone saying? And then using an approach to try and catalog and sequence events. So there's a um, there's an approach I think it's used by consultancy McKinsey. It's called MECs, it's called mutually exclusive, completely exhaustive. So basically, you have everything down on the table, and then you try and catalog them into areas that are thematic. And then once you've done that bit, you try and sort of sequence. You know what happens and when, 
Um, research and best examples. Best practice examples, are, there's a slide after this just talking briefly around our, um, the local government association 15 steps by design. So that was something that I looked at really, really closely in terms of developing our strategy. Building an evidence base. Um, so when I started very much the annual workforce diversity report was um, crucial in understanding that. But also what has the organization done prior to me starting? So there's been a lot of activity when it comes to ED&I. Um, so I, I think for most organization, it, it's not new, you know, but there might be a renewed focus on this space. So really to understand what the evidence base was, um, make sure that we're communicating effectively and continuously. So this is very much the journey map. So the changes, the iterations that you're making with the strategy is so important to go back and engage with those stakeholders to say, okay, this is what you have said. This is what we're trying to implement. Are they happy with it? You know, if not change, adapt and revisit again as well. So it's ensuring that when you come to launching the strategy, you have the right support um, in place. Um, so you, you can have a successful launch um, when you launch the strategy. Um, this slide really is just to briefly talk through the LGA approach for diversity by design. So, so this complements the EFLG, the Equality Framework for Local Government, but it's much more sort of specific for um, um, the workforce. So they have a recommended 15 steps. Um, it allows for four steps to achieve authentic, impactful, and sustainable change to yield both fairer outcomes and better for performance for EDNI. Um, I think what was important for us is to try and make it your own. So it's not a lift and shift of those 15 steps that can work, you know, within the organization. It's about making, it's about ensuring that the 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 voice of your employee, your employers is coming through the strategy, but using this as a bit of a guide in terms of what you want to do and how you're going to do it and when you're going to do it as well. Um, the next stage really was just um, as part of the strategy was getting that governance process in place. Uh, it's really important that um, the EDI agenda is owned by that highest level. So the corporate leadership team and chief exec and his direct reports have oversight, view and input into what we are doing. Um, and then also sort of highlighting the key areas that we wanted to focus on for 2023, 2024. Four, so 2022, 2023, sorry. Um, so it was around talent and leadership, business planning, um, business partnering, obviously, EDI um, learning and training, recruitment and selection, and staff networks as well. So, so we have key areas that we're going to focus on. Um, and then also, like I said, this is a light touch sort of project management approach, but we needed some controls and systems in place to make sure that we are progressing on the actions that we've agreed on. So finally, we get to the vision. <laughs> um, so we launched our strategy back in June this year. Um, we had a really, really positive turnout in terms of um, engagement in this space. Um, and then, you know, in terms of launching the strategy, we made sure that, you know, as part of that seminar webinar, um, there were breakout rooms so people could go away and discuss um, areas that might be relevant to them. What does it mean to them? Um, and then really sort of follow up quickly with what's happening next. So I think it's important that you know, once you've launched a strategy, you communicate quickly around, okay, so this is what you've said, and this is what we're going to be doing. And this is also what else we're going to be doing as well. So keep that momentum going once you've had that launch. And I think the launch is, is successful as how much um, work you've done prior to that. So if you've done good engagement, you know, you've really gone out and you've gone back again and again, you will get, you know, good positive sort of feedback as well. Um, the next bit I'm really going to go and talk about is the three, um, the three, the six E's to creating an organizational mindset. So this is something that's been developed by inclusive employees. Um, but I think it's quite a, um, um, it's something I remember <laughs> in terms of what I'm trying to do and why I'm doing it. So the six E's are engage, equip, empower, embed, evaluate, involve. So I'm going to go into each of those in a little bit more detail and also talking about what Essex County Council is doing in each one of these areas as well. So in terms of um, engage, so it's making sure that you're engaging staff at all levels to ensure that they have good understanding and awareness of the organization's vision for inclusion and diversity. Um, some of the things that we are doing in Essex County Council, so we've got quarterly EDR sessions, as I mentioned, with um, our senior leadership team. Um, we created a baseline for understanding our employee experience through targeted inclusive staff survey questions. Um, at the moment, they're every two years, but we're looking at, you know, how do we get sort of more feedback, you know, in between those periods as well. 
um, and communicating um, communications that are personal, authentic and supportive using real people stories. And I think that's really important. So when you are going out to communicate what we're doing around ED&I, try and get the staff voice in there as much as possible. So use, so and I'll give an example in terms of what we did for Pride as well. Um, but it's making sure that you're tying in what else is happening in the business. So you're informing and educating staff. This is a continuous journey. There's lots of stuff happening. Um, second one is really around equipping. So it's equipping our staff so we can design, deliver and more effective, inclusive policies and, and processes. So one area we are looking at is um, having inclusive leadership training um, for our top 250 leaders within the business. Um, also looking at cultural and emotional intelligence um, learning for our managers as well. Um, and at the moment, we also meet with our staff network leads every six weeks. Again, just making sure that, you know, they're fully um, informed about what is happening and how they can, they, how can, how they can play their part in this as well. Um, the third E, I think, <laughs> is Empower. So that's about empowering our staff networks through team discussions, um, having psychological safety space, um, and making sure that people from underrepresented groups are, are, are a part of that discussion. So one of the areas that we uh, that the council developed was our Quest program. So this was specifically within our adult services, um, where a group of individuals were seconded to work on a specific protected characteristic. So we did a quest on age, race, LBGDQI, and just finished the age, um, that's already said age, LBGDQI, um, race, age, and disability. So um, the Quest program was essentially where, like I said, we the, the function allowed individuals to be seconded to go away and fact find, you know, what what does it mean to be of a different protected characteristic in, in the organization? So they did a number of interviews, talked to loads of individuals, and then came back with a set of recommendations um, for senior management as well. So it's really sort of, you know, empowering individuals to go and tell us, you know, what do we don't know, essentially. So it's supporting our staff networks through resources. I put time and money in. and I think you know for me staff networks it's also making sure I'm giving enough of my time to support our staff networks and and what I find you know in terms of my role as EDR lead is almost that sort of steering of um, activity so I might not be fully involved in each of the networks and what they're doing but I'm making sure that I'm plugged in and I'm sort of supporting them, you know, in terms of what um, their sort of greater vision is. We also launched our Women in Leadership program. I'll talk about that. I've got a separate slide that on that in a moment. And also, as I mentioned, we've got EDR webinars. So this was off the back of our launch. We're going to have three EDR webinars for the whole council. And we're taking on what people are telling us. And that's how we're trying to sort of develop the webinars on those particular discussion pieces. Um, next one really around embedding. So embedding inclusion and diversity to build a positive um, reputation, both internally and externally. So Internally, what we're working on at the moment, and we're going to launch that fairly soon, is our EDI dashboard. I will talk about that again um, briefly. Um, as I mentioned, a series of interactive web webinars and our revised sort of employee value proposition. And, and, and I've got a separate slide on that as well. Um, next one, really, to evaluate. Um, how are you evaluating diversity and inclusion progress? Are you measuring it against realistic and achievable goals? So in terms of what we're doing, Essex County Council, we have a target in terms of narrow, narrowing the gender pay gap. Um, we also analyze attendees, attendee lists of our interactive webinars. Sometimes I think it's important to spend that time to make sure that, you know, where are, where are the areas of the business that we need to target more? Have, have the conversations with those areas, you know, is, this, is the webinar relevant to them? If not, why not? You know, what else can we do to make it, you know, more engaging to bits of, other bits of the business? Um, staff and pulse surveys. So um, this is a real good opportunity to understand, you know, how we're progressing in the organisation. I think the caveat that I would put on that as well is you don't want to over survey people out as well. Um, but it's making sure that when we are doing surveys, we are having those discussions with staff networks, um, DEI groups, um, boards within the organisation to say, you know, how reflective is this? You know, what pro what progress are we seeing and what areas? Do we need to focus on more as well and the final one was around evolve so that's the last e um so this is about continuous learning and drawing best practice to develop creative inclusive interventions and return on investment 
Um, I think what's quite important is to sort of try and sort of make the financial business case for EDNI. So lots of reports out there um, that will highlight, you know, how inclusive organizations have um, better retention rates. So you can equate that to cost of recruitment, um, increased well-being. Again, you could equate that to um, um, reduction in sickness levels. Um, decrease in discrimination cases as well. So, so there is a financial element attached to EDNI, and I think it's quite important, particularly for the public sector as well, to be able to articulate that well. Use of social media. Um, I'm very much plugged into LinkedIn, and I've I've got a a large collection of EDI professionals on LinkedIn as well, and it's really useful for me to understand what else is happening in this space, um, and what are the bits that I want to take forward as well within. Uh, my organization um develop your own brand for intervention as well so it goes back to what i said earlier you, you can't just do a lift and shift you have to really sort of think about what does so if you're developing a strategy how does it resonate with the organization and and test that out so so it's it's making sure that we are sort of being as wide as possible um next slide so I'm just going to go now briefly, and I'm just conscious of the time as well now. Um, some of the <laughs> some of the um, sort of great work that we've been doing around increasing EDI intelligence. So earlier this year, um, as part of um, National um, Autism Awareness Week, um, we had Alex Manners, who's, who's on the picture, um, talk to us about um, what it's like living with Asperger's. It, it was a really powerful um, webinar. I think we just got, um, we'd had so much engagement in it and it was just a space where you felt there was psychological safety and staff were able to talk openly about either their experience or their family experience as well. So so it was just a, it was something that I thought was really important to highlight in terms of, you know, um, bringing in outside sort of um, knowledge into the organization as well. Um, as I mentioned, um, we celebrated um, Pride Month. Um, I think a couple of key changes we did this year. Um, so after speaking to our LBGTQI staff network, we flew the rainbow flag for the whole month. Um, previously, we, we'd done it over, I think, a period over a weekend. So that was really, really positive. Um, we also, as part of the communications that we're out, you know, we're encouraging staff to use pronouns in their email signatures. Um, also encourage staff to have the our um, rainbow flag as part of their team's background as well. Um, and we have a um, specific LBGTQI awareness training on our um, learning platform as well. Again, encouraging individuals, you know, go on to that and um, use this time, you know, to educate yourself. Um, ooh, picture of me and my colleagues. Uh, those are my colleagues, um, Antonia Ogandayesi and Phil Chiza. Um, they, they're both um, race leads in children's and adults, respectively. Um, but this was part of our employee value pro proposition, you know, really putting diversity within the heart of this. And so when we're going out, you know, we, we talk about, you know, Essex is diverse, we're increasing diversity and we value diversity as well. But the, just to add, I mean, this is part of a, um, a part of our sort of um, recruitment selection process. There's a lot of work happening in this space, um, particularly around reducing biases um, in the recruitment selection process as well. Um, as I mentioned, the Women in Leadership program. So this was launched um, recently. Um, and again, this was a piece of work where the organization, we define that, you know, we have a gap at a certain level. Um, it is a sort of, um, it's, it's, it's a long term sort of um, approach. And we know that if we're going to change, you know, some the representation at a senior level, you know, we will need to invest in our employees um, so they have the right skill sets, confidence, et cetera, to, to, to go to those levels. So that's something we launched earlier this year as well. And celebrating South Asian History Month. So this year, um, so, th th so this was an event that happened um, a couple of weeks ago. It was one of three events that we did um, around South Asian History Month. But again, you know, it's really sort of bringing that cultural sort of um, um, sharing, you know, into the space. So we had um, um, henna tattoos that were um, sticky ones, they're not real ones. Um, and we had Aaron board, which is a popular game that's um, played in, in, in South Asia as well. So and we had lovely food. So, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a brilliant, it was a brilliant afternoon of sharing and learning. Um, I suppose in terms of what we got coming up as well, so as part of National Inclusion Week, um, we're going to be launching our monthly allyship 
training as well for the whole council. Um, we're also working with our LGBTQ staff network in launching rainbow lanyards. This will be accompanied, accompanied with pledges as well. So this is within um, the allyship space. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be launching our EDI dashboard as well. Um, it's a piece of work that's um, it's, it's taken quite a while to get to a point where we have a defined where we will have a defined dashboard, but it's not just looking at hard data. We're really sort of looking at having the people's voice within this space. So this is something that we'll be sharing. It will be on a quarterly basis. It will be sort of speaking to the strategy in terms of our actions and where we're progressing and where we need more um, focus on potentially as well. Um, and a few other things that we're doing in 2023. So um, we've started our um, pilot of diverse interview panels. So we'll be assessing that. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we just completed our quest programs. We also launched an anti-racism strategy. Um, this was specifically in children's services, but it's, it's, it, it is broader as well. So we'll be looking to embed that. Um, as I mentioned, we'll be holding three whole council webinars as well. And we'll be also starting our inclusive leadership training. I'm on my final two slides. I'm just conscious of the time. So in terms of overcoming challenges, <laughs> um, um, so let's highlight sort of three key areas. And I think, you know, in developing the strategy, it's really important to keep people informed along the journey. Just, just keep on going back, engage, engage, engage. Um, once you have a strategy in place as well, it's important to pause and reevaluate. You know, some things may be progressing faster than you expected others are more challenging, you know, maybe the landscape has shifted. I think with an EDI space, often we are dictated what's happening externally as well and what are the pressures and influences there. So use that. It's important just to make sure that there is time for that reflection piece and also celebrate and build on successes. I think that's important as much as anything. So, and my final slide really is um, in terms of what's on the horizon. So I've just highlighted um, a few areas, but I think, you know, it, there will be more but i think in terms of the conversations i have and and my peers that you know i talk to who are working in the edi space i think some of the areas that will will be coming up more i think more prominently will be around flexible working so i think there'll be an increased demand for applicants to know exactly what's on offer when we offer flexible working i think there's more awareness now around neurodivergency and I think organizations will really need to consider, you know, inclusive design from the beginning. Um, and, 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 and yeah, um, I think there'll be an increased demand from executives um, around inclusive leadership. I think ex inclusive leadership now is very much a part of your design, um, part of your leadership skill set. So I think we're going to see an increase about, you know, practical steps about what we can, how, how can I exercise inclusive leadership? And ethnicity and disability pay gap reporting as well. I think many organisations might be doing that internally already. Um, I think there's a potential for it to become statutory. We don't know yet. Um, but I think the work behind this really needs to be around disclosure rates. So organisations are aware they have good data. So when we do, if you do end up reporting on ethnicity and disability, um, you have the data to support your evidence as well. And that is it. And I, I have gone over time slightly. I, I do apologise, but I hope you found that inf it, um, um, in, in, in educational inform informed. But I I'm going to hand back to Nicola now. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Thes. Yes, I think we can safely agree you jam packed <laughs> quite a lot in there. So, but really informative. So, thanks for that. And uh, I think you've probably captured maybe lots of people's thinking because there isn't that many questions you'll be pleased to know so there is a couple and I think let's just try and get get them in because hopefully they're, they're pretty straightforward so Emily Otterson has asked what is a pulse survey and what kind of questions do you use in your staff survey to evaluate the effectiveness of interventions so pulse surveys they from my understanding they're done a bit more of a regular basis um I mean, we have a system called Qualtrics within the council that actually gathers all the information and data and is able to give us um, a breakdown of what people have said and, and how to set it. So I think pulse surveys are helpful um, if you're looking at a specific sort of um, data set or questions around a certain area. So you might want to go back a, cu a couple of times in that space. Um, I don't think they differentiate massively between larger surveys. It's just more sort of... Um, as the name suggests, you know, you're trying to get a check in terms of, you know, that progression piece. Perfect. Um, 
Lorna Keenan has asked, who's delivering your inclusive leadership training? Um, so we are working with um, consultants as well, um, HSM, um, but we're also designing every, um, our training in-house as well. So it, it will be a combination of both. So, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. And the last question I can see at the moment is from Tom Rutland. Oh, there's a few more coming up. Um, we might run out of time, but let's see. Um, and Tom's asking, how do you balance or how did you balance LGBT History Month um, and Gypsy and Traveller History Month? It's, I mean, what we do is we, and and, and this, this scenario came up, a similar scenario came up um, in, when I was working at Hertfordshire County County council is that we speak to the staff networks you know and i think what we try and do is say and, and if this is a communications um piece is making sure that we are planning prior mm -hmm. um but also if we are unable to do and celebrate you know recognize a certain event at a certain time because there's a conflict um we have that discussion with the networks we have the discussion with the people to say okay you know we are trying to create the, the, the synergies here yeah? trying to create an inclusive environment it's not about prioritizing it's about making sure that individuals are content you know with our approach and what we will be doing later on as well i think ed and i um in this space it is about making sure that we have the opportunity for people to come together and work on it together you know and in that way yeah. you 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 can sort of sort of manage some of those expectations as well Perfect. Thank you. Lorna is just asking, do you have specific officers who are employed in the delivery of EDI initiatives? And if so, how many? Um, so, so, so this is myself um, as the lead for workforce. And as I mentioned, we've both got um, Antonio and Phil who are working specifically in race within the functional spaces. Um, the approach we've taken around EDNI is really to embed it in the organisation. So I work really closely with um, individuals in our recruitment selection team, talent team, et cetera. So it's about sort of um, instilling that education piece across the business. Perfect. Thank you. There's another couple, but I think um, Adria Pitak is saying about having some more detail about your EDI dashboard. But I think maybe they could reach out to you, Faz, couldn't they potentially on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about some of the sort of elements we put in there. I mean, like I said, we're still finalising it. Um, so, yeah. so it's off the press. It is, it is, bit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure you can. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you've put your email, haven't you? So people could reach out to you. Um, Mark Hempshell has said, "How do you promote and ensure elected members are actively involved in your EDI strategy?" Um, so we, so my my director, um, executive director at Pan Parks, um, director, executive director for People and Transformation, and my, my direct line manager as well, Alison Woods, um, HR director, have those conversations um, with our elected members, and also, you know, I just want to add, you know, without their input, you know, they 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 drive behind ED and I and making it part of the business, you know, it'd be it'd be a lot more difficult if 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 that support wasn't there. So it's really important that you have that sort of senior management support driving it forward definitely and the last one and then we will close it is from Lydia Mallison and she's asking have you implemented anything specific for inclusive recruitment we so as I mentioned I mean one area we are looking at is around diverse interview panels we're also looking at having specific EDI questions as so a question bank um, within the interview process um, so, so there are a number of actions we are looking at um, around inclusive recruitment. Um, we're also disability um, level three confident employer as well. So we're a leader in that space. So um, number of number of areas, but happy to sort of go into that more detail if 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 required. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thanks, Fez. That was like quick fire question round. So <laughs> you did amazing. So yeah, I know. I was like trying to catch them all in. <laughs> there is another one, but I think we no. No, you've put it in there. That's all right. My screen keeps going. But um, um, Faz's um, email has been added in the bottom of the chat. So obviously, I'm sure he will be happy if anyone wants to reach out to him. So I think it's just, again, to say thanks, Faz. That's really, really, really informative. And uh, I think I'll be uh, reaching out to you as well. So uh, <laughs> I'll be in touch. But um, no, and thank you, everyone, for attending. And just to let you know that... There is other. See, it keeps. It's all right. I'm ignoring. It's all right. 
my screen keeps going funny. Um, yeah, just to let everybody know that in in September, October, we are launching um, our awards webinars. So they're sort of little snippets of those that won at PPMA last year or were highly commended or shortlisted, just to give you snippets of kind of what they've done in, in the space that they were, you know, shortlisted in. And, uh, you know, so look out for them. Dates will be coming out next week for those. So again, thank you. Faz, it's, it's been a really great session and thanks for everyone for attending. Thank you.